Hey, it's Joe. Welcome to the JotaCast. I'm assuming you've come here from the video How to Play Sabacc, because now that you know how to play Sabacc, I'm gonna go through all of the different named hands you can have in Sabacc. These will be in order of best to worst. Good luck remembering these. If you're new to the game, you'll probably need a little cheat sheet handy or memorize this video or something. Also, different sources have different hand ranks, so we're gonna go with the ones listed in the Galaxy's Edge rulebook with one I've included from the Hasbro Han Solo card game rulebook. Most of these hands are different ways your cards can come to a total of zero, which doesn't happen as often as you'd think, so a lot of these hands will, are pretty rare, actually. So the best hand in the whole game is called Pure Sabacc, and it consists of both zero cards. The zeros are called Psylops, if you're feeling really fancy. This little green Psylop. The next best is Full Sabacc, which is zero with exactly these cards, four tens. A zero with just two tens is called Prime Sabacc, but it's not listed in the Galaxy's Edge version, but is listed in the Hasbro version. I would include this if you're going all out. Next, we've got the Fleet, which is the same as Pure Sabacc, but instead of tens, it's four of any kind of any other card. Next in line is the... Yep. That's what it's called in the rulebook, which is a zero with one pair. Then there's the Rylet, which is zero with a positive three of a kind and a negative pair, or vice versa. So three of a kind and a pair, but they, you know, one's positive, one's negative. Squadron is right below Rylet, and that's if your hand total is zero made up of four of a kind. So this is different from the fleet and the full sabacc in that you don't have a zero in your hand. Under squadron is the G-Wiz, which is zero with these specific cards, one through four and 10. The one through four and the 10 must not be light colors. So negative one through four and a positive 10 or you know, negative 10 and a positive one through four. That's the G-Wiz. Next down the ladder is the straight Chiron, which is when your cards total zero with a run of four. Bantha's Wild is zero with any number of cards as long as it includes three of a kind. Under that is the rule of two. Uh, so clever, I guess. Sabacc players are super familiar with ancient Sith lore to put this name of a thing in their game. This is when your card equals zero, but you have two pairs in your hand regardless of how many cards. Tiebreakers for all of the above fancy named hands if there's ever a tie in hand rank, remember the lower integer wins. So if you have four fives and someone else has four threes, the threes take it. Getting a tie on these is gonna be very rare, but that's kind of the rule of thumb. Under this is Sabak. Sabak is just when you have your cards equal zero. You've got Sabak and the there is a kind of a ranking within this. If multiple people hit zero, this is how to tell who wins. Best is if you have a pair in your hand. Below that is just who has the most cards. And if that's a tie still, it's who has the highest value of cards. So if your cards equal zero and there's a tie for the most cards and you, there's also a tie for having a pair, then you add up all of your positive value cards and whoever has the highest result wins. If that's a tie, then the win goes to the player with the highest total single card value. So if you had a 10 in your hand, you beat the guy who had an 8. Which is kind of the reverse of how the tiebreaker worked for all the other named hands. Because those of you were going off the lowest card. But it's very unlikely you ever get to that. And ranking below Sabak is just whoever's the closest to zero. This is called a null wreck. A null a null a null a null a um, that's probably how it's pronounced. Uh, it's got the same sort of tiebreakers that, that Sabak has, with one extra being the first one. If there's a tie, the player who's closest is zero with a positive number wins the tie. Then it's, if that's a, still a tiebreaker, it would go to who has the most cards. If that's a tie, then it goes to who has the highest positive card total. And then again, if that's still a tie, it goes to the player who's closest to zero with the highest single positive card. If you somehow still have a tie, the tied players draw a card and the closest to zero wins. Okay, now you really know how to play Sabacc. But wait, you probably need to add some betting rules, otherwise what's the point really? The game's about bluffing and betting and taking home credits, and if 
what does the game really doesn't exist without bluffing otherwise it's just kind of uh, you ever try playing poker without betting it's there's no point um, I don't recommend using real currency because gambling is problematic and uh, gross but if you want to go for it but I say just go find a bunch of coins from your your coin collection or some Tide Pods to stand in for Mon Calamari Flan or whatever. Just gra grab some fun stuff, you know, poker chips if you got those. Uh, they've got a pretty random assortment of junk on the table in the Solo movie, so pretty much anything you grab could fit in for a Star Wars currency. The simplest way to add betting to the game would do something like, you know, regular poker. Before each of the three rounds, all players must ante an agreed upon amount to the pot. So maybe just everybody throws in one chip. Then... The dealer deals out all the cards. Then, starting with the player to the left of the dealer, they can choose to place a bet or check, which it means just to not place a bet. Then the betting passes to the player on the left, who must then check to pass things along. Call to match the previous bet, so if the first player threw in five chips, then anyone down the line is obligated to match that. Or you can raise to up it, and then everybody either has to fold out junk as they call it in Sabak, or match the bet. Uh, betting goes around the table until all players have uh, checked. And do this before each round of the hand. The player who wins the hand wins the pot. You might need to look up more advanced betting rules used in poker or make up your own, but essentially adding a round of betting before each round of play makes the game actually into a game. Now you know how to play Sabak. I hope you have fun, and thanks for watching. I hope this helped. Ha <laughs> 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 <laughs>